The way that I study soils is with a shovel. I, I dig pits, I, I open up the ground, and I see what's actually there. So there's a really strong empirical nature to what I do. and um, It has to be ultimately used to get at some kind of mechanism and theory about how the soil works, but that's my philosophy for understanding soils. Dan Hermas interview, take one. I study how soils uh, occur uh, naturally on the landscape, how they develop with time, how they, how they get altered, and also what properties distinguish them from the bedrock from which they formed. So they're one of what are considered three essential resources uh, for life, uh, water, um, air, and soil. Without soil, we're not able to retain the water near the surface and exchange it with the atmosphere and allow the biological community and ecology to sort of access that water. And so terrestrial life is, is really uh, dependent on, on soil. It produces our food, produces our fiber, it produces um, our building and construction materials, it manages our waste, it holds our nutrients for, for our plants. It is our, it is our very life. I, so I use monoliths in my work, and the monolith that we normally think of is me taking that soil, keeping everything in the right order, uh, keeping it in situ essentially, and uh, pull it out of the pit and bring it back to uh, the lab to uh, use it for teaching purposes and for research as well. So keeping it all together in the right morphological order is really important. As the soil develops, uh, the soil forms these layers that we can see visually, and they have different properties. And one of the properties is their structure. And we scan them with uh, uh, a laser scanner. We digitize their shapes so that we can um, we can get more information and look at the variability of those shapes um, as we're trying to relate them back to other properties. I use the Integrated Arts Research Initiative as an impetus to essentially finish some monoliths that I collected over the last 10 years or so. And it was a great opportunity to um, work with an undergraduate student who I worked with, Yuhan Yi. We, we put together uh, these, these monoliths um, and finished them out and painted them and, and expressed them in a way that would be accessible to students. Um, and then we took them and we froze them as part of the process of being uh, in the RE exhibit. During the exhibition, I gave a performative lecture there in the gallery, um, which was uh, the first time I'd ever done anything like that before. Also, it was good during the exhibition, Terra Anima, to, to interact with how artists and, and others represent soil. So in the gallery, besides the monoliths that I presented, uh, there were other ways of presenting the soil that we study. I asked some questions related to what, what is being learned through, through the different methods. And so that was interesting to think about how, how different people um, learn aspects of soils uh, by um, interacting them with, with uh, uh, in places outside of a lab um, or places outside of the normal traditional scientific methodology. The Spencer Art Museum had these prints next to the uh, monoliths. They were uh, in a representation of these uh, perfect Euclidean objects that form the building blocks for soil particles well before we could ever prove that uh, those shapes could, could even exist because they're so small. We couldn't access them until, until the invention of uh, X-ray diffraction. And so there's a really strong empirical nature to what I do. And, but I do find it's fascinating that um, that it really is this philosophical foundation that forms the basis for the work that I do and that, that scientists have been doing forever. I think we have to assume things first uh, before we can, we can prove them. That's part of, of, of how we're built. You know, we're not strictly empirical beings. And uh, at the end of the day, even the people that, that hold to a strong sense of empiricism actually have to admit that they're relying on a non-empirical commitment, some philosophical commitment by which they can start moving forward in their empirical work.